In this video I'm going to show you how to make and fit lead soakers. Now these are the unsung and unseen heroes of joining any plain tiled roof or slate roof to a brick wall or where a roof abuts a chimney and fitting these will ensure that it is 100% waterproof afterwards. And here are the two main occasions when you will need to make and fit lead soakers and that's for roofing with slate both natural and man-made and plain overlapping tiles like these. Lead soakers are usually used in conjunction with step flashings like the one seen here and it's the traditional and best way to make slates or flat profile tiles just like this one waterproof. A lot of times though you will see roofers or builders use the wrong type of flashing like the stepped cover flashing shown here. This type of flashing isn't for plain double overlapping tiles and fitting it to slates or tiles like these is wrong and it will leak later on almost certainly. It's also wrong here when fitted without any additional waterproofing measures and wrong on these slates and wrong here. This video will show you how easy it is to do it right. If you need more information on roof flashings though, or soakers or step flashings, please visit the link at the end of the video or in the description bar. Taking this plain tiled roof as an example, let's use the power of Photoshop to show you exactly how this was done. Firstly, make sure your eaves row or starter course is fully in place like this. Next we're going to measure the distance between the top of the eave slate and the bottom where it finishes into the gutter. This is the length of your first soaker. Now we need to work out the vertical upstand height where it abuts the wall. Typically this will be a recommended 75mm or 3 inches thereabouts. If you have particularly thick or curved tiles like handmaids, I would recommend just placing your next temporary tile into position. Now double check that you still have 65mm or just over 2 inches of soaker that will be proud of your roof tiles. This is so that when your soakers are fitted they will be covered by your step flashings later on. Now we have the upstand measurement, we need a width for the soaker. This is normally about half the width of a standard roof tile or an uncut slate but a minimum I would say of 100 millimeters or 4 inches. But if you can foresee any reasons to increase this width like prevailing wind direction, moss build up or anything like that feel free to increase the width a bit further. Now we have all three basic measurements for your first lead soaker we simply go and cut it out of a piece of lead and bend it into shape just like this. Taking your first lead soaker, it's time to fix it into place. Now there are two tried and tested methods for doing this. Head fixing, where the soaker is nailed flush with the top of the tile through the existing nail holes in the head of the tile as seen here. Or, alternatively, to increase the length of the soaker by an additional 25mm to form a nibbed return. This is then bent and simply hooks over the top of the tile or batten to fix it onto the roof. My personal favourite though is head fixing where possible as it stops the soakers being able to move around. Once your first soaker is fixed and the next tile placed on, measure up your remaining soakers by checking the length. Usually they will all be the same size. Measure from the top of the tile that's going to receive the lead soaker to just above the overlap point of your previous row of tiles. This ensures that no unsightly lead will be poking out and visible when all the tiles are back on the roof. With the second lead soaker fixed into place, you should now be able to see how the lead soakers overlap each other to provide the waterproofing, as seen here. It should now be a simple matter of alternating between tile and soaker 
all the way to the top of your roof, as seen in this sequence of pictures. Now your lead soakers are completely finished and hidden away underneath your roof tiles. It will just be a matter now of fitting your step flashings and I'll show you how to do this later in another video. Here is the roof again in real life and that's exactly how it was done. Now we're familiar with the basics, let me just rattle through the fitting of lead soakers to a chimney stack in a slate roof which is only marginally different. Here I've trimmed down on the vertical upstand height or water line from the recommended 65 or 75 millimetres to about 50 millimetres or 2 inches. This is so that it matches in with the other flashings on the property and doesn't look out of place. Obviously you can keep this at the recommended 65-75 millimetres if you want to. Again, I've opted for a nailed fixing into the top of the lead soaker, but this time it goes into the top of the slating lath and not through the slate. Now I've put on my first full slate and fixed it at the head of the slate and on the left. Notice I've chosen not to fix through this nail hole, even though it's asking for it, as that would compromise the lead soaker that sits underneath it. Next, it's on with another lead soaker. And now we're off and running again, alternating between slates and soakers in a sequence. At this point, let me just show you how much lead soaker overlap we have by simply pulling them away from the wall here. As you can see, it's a good 75 to 100 millimetres, around about 4 inches. Right, let's carry on. And there we are, done. Now all we need to do is fit the step flashings, point them up, and the job is done. Well, there you have it, the basics of lead soakers into tiles or slates. I hope this video has helped in some way, and look out for my other videos on how to make step flashing. Thanks for watching.